So module two, you gathered all your research and data, you put together a strategic direction, strategic intent, and you gathered all of your content. Now it's time for some fun. Now we're gonna design and build. So, we start with architecting. And one of the reasons that you have to gather your content first is because it guides how you structure your content. Because what architecture is, it's essentially the flow of the way people will interact with your website, essentially live within your website. And uh, it is literally a construction of a flow, like an architect would do for a building. But I feel very adamant that you need content first, because I have lived through too many examples where you architect around content that should be developed, or could be developed, or would be a great idea, that winds up being desert plains, where there's nothing but tumbleweeds in that area. And if you aren't developing content, or if you're developing conceptual pages for potential content, what happens is you spend a lot of time building an area that doesn't get viewed at all. And I've seen it before, and I showed a chart back before, and I'll show it again right now. And this little map is uh, the hot and cold zones of the CSO.org before we rebuilt it in 2009-10. And you see a lot of pages toward the right of this image that have nothing in it, which basically means there was no traffic uh, occurring on those pages. And, and frankly, even with today's site, there's a lot of dead pages. And that just happens. That's going to happen because there's some pages you institutionally have to represent but and build into the site knowing that you're not going to get a ton of content there, right? I know, for example, the top 20 paths for patrons on our website are go to the calendar, look for a concert, check to find the seats, put the seats in my cart, check out, right? And the top 20 paths are variations of that. But that said, this is why I feel very strongly about content, because when you're building multiple layers of a deep site, you have to know that there are reasons behind the path that you're going to put patrons through. Because when you look to build, when we're architecting, this is kind of a simple process, but it's built in the logic behind the content structure you have. You have your home page, and from there, you have your main navigation. And your main navigation should not be more than seven or so categories of content, right? I've broken the rule before, I don't love it. But within those, this becomes your primary navigation throughout the site. And within each of these sections, you're going to have sub-navigation, right? So you're going to have subsections within the site, within that area of navigation within the site which will lead to another level of pages that are associated there. And how deep you go is all going to be dependent on what content and what functionality do you have, right? So if this is, you know, uh, about whoever you are, then there are certain aspects. You have the artists, you have the administration, and you have the, let's call it the history, right? And each of those might have subsections, right? So if it's an orchestra, you have conductors, you have the uh, various sections, and then you might have support, whatever, right? And then you might even have subsections within these subsections, right? But you know you have content for them. And it's easy to build a very deep area when you know you have content. But on the other hand, if you have an area where you say, well, I think I'm, I'm going to create a program around this, and you build a page on a conceptual aspect, and you don't have anything to fill, to fill it when you're building, it becomes a big black hole that isn't filled, and it looks very obviously empty. So, that's why it's important to have people throughout the organization working with you to define the content so that when you go through this process, which we'll go through in uh, this section of the module, is establishing what the architecture is. Because the next step after architecting is defining what are these pages going to be. And that's the wireframing. And in wireframing, you're, on, you're defining the flow within a page of the content organization and the functionality organization on each and every page from throughout the site. 
So it gets very complicated from here on out. That's why having all the content to start to support your strategic intent is all laid out before you.